It's really a pleasure to introduce Professor Tom Miller from Queen's University as our ITC colloquium speaker today. A few words about Tom. He actually received his uh, Bachelor in Math and also his PhD in Astrophysics, both from University of Manchester. Then he moved to um, Canada uh, in Toronto for a postdoc and then in Oxford before uh, getting back to his home institute for a five-year advanced fellowship. But then he quit in between of this advanced uh, fellowship to be a permanent uh, faculty, I mean, to actually hold a permanent faculty position at the University of Manchester. And after 25 years, in 2006, he moved to Queen University as the dean of the Faculty of Engineering and Physical Science until 2015. So a few words about uh, what is the focus of his work. He's mainly focused on the physics and chemistry of ISM, and more specifically, he's focused on the molecular astrophysics, developing chemical kinetic molecule models for actually describing the formation and destruction of molecules. And then he's also often using the molecular long emission for the process of a stop, burst, and death, actually. And today, he's going to talk about um, the beautiful topic of light in the darkness and the role of the UV photons in the circumstellar envelope, envelopes of the AGB stars. So the good news is that Tom would be here until the end of November. So if you get any questions or would like to actually discuss with him in more details, please come to his office. He's at 225. So that's all what I wanted to say. So we're looking forward to hear your talk today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Razi, for the introduction and um, uh, for the opportunity to, to spend some months here at the Center for Astrophysics. Um, I wanted to say uh, some general words about, about chemistry in, in circumstellar envelopes and, and why people are interested in them and, and to, to uh, tell you a little bit about kind of ongoing research. So a lot of the stuff I'll say is not quite finished, but it's, uh, I'll show you the kind of directions that we're moving in and trying to understand the most recent observations of, of molecules in, in uh, circumstellar envelopes. Um, so this uh, area of a, of a star's life, stars between 0.8 and 8 solar masses uh, evolve into onto the uh, red giant and asymptotic giant branch phase. It's a phase that only lasts about uh, 10 to the 5 years or so, so it's quite a short phase in the lifetime of a, of a, of a star before it goes on to form a, a planetary nebula. But it's, it's one that, that has, uh, over, the, over the years, generated a lot of, 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 of science, even though the, the phase is uh, the lifetime is quite short. In part, this is because, uh, from a chemical point of view at least, historically these were seen as fairly clean astrochemical uh, laboratories. Um, the, the flows were thought to be spherically symmetric, so it was a 1 over r squared density distribution. The temperature distributions within these envelopes could be worked out from molecular line and, uh, emission maps. Uh, they were irradiated by the interstellar radiation field, which we, we, we understand quite well. Uh, and so we had a, a good indication of the physical conditions within these isolated uh, objects, and therefore could try and interpret with theoretical models the, the observations that were going on. So, and, and the other thing, to say is that this, these chemical processes covered huge ranges of densities and temperatures. So they brought in lots of different uh, uh, laboratory uh, astrochemists, if you like, and they're trying to understand the, the underlying uh, reactions that would have formed these molecules. Uh, they're also important because they're sites of nucleosynthesis. So, so if I was studying the uh, isotopal orbits of molecules, you can get some information about the nucleosynthetic uh, processes that occur on, uh, inside these uh, stars. Um, they're also very important for dust formation in the interstellar medium. The oxygen-rich stars form uh, silicate material, and the uh, carbon stars form carbonaceous materials that go on to, to uh, be lost into the interstellar medium and populate the interstellar medium. So maybe 30% or so of perhaps more of interstellar dust is, is, uh, is formed in these, in these uh, types of objects. And of course, that dust is the stuff that goes to make the, uh, the planet that we're, we're standing on, for example. So, there's a number of reasons for, for uh, studying these, these objects despite their short lifetimes. So this, this picture is just a, a table, it's just a, a list of all the detected interstellar molecules. There's over 210 of them. You're not meant to pay any attention to them except 
that over the last decade we've been detecting bigger and bigger molecules in the interstellar medium. Um, when you look at circumstellar envelopes and divide, tickle those molecules out, you find that there's well over 100 molecules been detected in circumstellar envelopes. And uh, these, many of these are, have been first detected in these envelopes, and many of them in, the, in particular carbon star RC102216. Um, they tend to favor uh, linear chain molecules, so I've got in red here the, the, the cyanopolines, HCN, HC3N, all the way up to, to HC9N, but there are other carbon chains. Um, carbon chains going with, with terminated with hydrogens from, all the way from uh, CH, C2H, all the way up to C, C8H. Um, so their molecules are dominated by carbon chains. They're also, in, in terms of the small molecules, many molecules containing silicon, uh, magnesium, uh, titanium, aluminium, certainly in the oxygen rich stars. You see the kind of uh, uh, molecules containing the elements that are going to build uh, interstellar silicates. So they're, uh, we're getting some indications of the like the molecular building blocks that go into making dust in these, in these stars. So there's very rich chemistry goes on in these envelopes. It's a, a, a rich chemistry that enables you with the specific properties of, of different molecules and how they're excited. And so on. It enables you to probe the physical conditions right through the, the envelopes from the dust formation zone, sometimes inside that zone, right out to the interstellar medium. Uh, typically these, these uh, Envelopes are perhaps a parsec in, in, in radius, and so the, with the typical expansion velocities, these flows start from the stellar photosphere and, and go out to, to, the, to the interstellar medium. It takes about 10 to the 5 or so years. So we're looking at, at envelopes which are created and evolve over this sort of period of time. So the most uh, observed AGB star is uh, RC10216, which uh, is uh, our, our a nearby very high mass luster carbon star, more than 10 to 5 solar masses per year. It has an envelope really out, out to 200 arc seconds, so on the order of a, of a light year, detected in CO and also in, in carbon dust. It contains a whole lot of molecular shells, so these are just some uh, images and contour maps of, uh, of a variety of molecules seen in, uh, in, these, in these objects. Um, and as I say, there's somewhere between 90 to 100 molecules been detected in this, in this object. I think probably a quarter of all the interstellar molecules have been detected first in this object, uh, rather than other regions of the interstellar. And these carbon chains are, are, are very ubiquitous in these, and, and they include the detection of uh, anions in the last uh, decade. So these are carbon chains with, with uh, electrons attached. All this sort of chemistry is, is in generally reasonably well understood in terms of, uh, of the flow of material from the, from the inner layers inner regions of the envelope out to the interstellar medium, being processed by interstellar photons, which get absorbed from radicals and ions, and these react uh, as, they, as they flow out and form these, uh, these new molecules. But there's certainly... Just the dust, how, what, what are the biggest particles? How, how big are the dust? How big are the dust particles? The dust particles probably grow to micron sizes. And what do you their size? Uh, time scales. Time so, scale. yeah. So when you get out into the outer regions of these envelopes, the, the time scales for deletion are much longer than the time scales for expansion. There are selection effects here, because uh, if you have linear molecules, they have fewer rotational levels. Their individual transitions are, are stronger, if you like, than, than complex molecules. So we see linear molecules in the main in this object, which uh, perhaps is a solar mass of material in it. Um, but there may be other uh, more complicated species in these, in these uh, shells as well. One of the real surprises uh, in recent years was the detection in this, in this carbon star was the detection of, of water and subsequently OH and, and formaldehyde. These stars are carbon rich, so essentially all the oxygen that they contain in them is tied up in CO, and the excess carbon goes into making all these uh, other molecules that, 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 that we see. Um, and I'll come back to this because this, uh, this was a, 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 quite, a, quite a surprise that we're detecting water with uh, transitions up to a thousand degrees above, above its ground state. And uh, in the last couple of years, there's been detection of, of methyl cyanide on, on size scales of, of one or two arc seconds, so very close to the, to the, to the star. So now I'll come back to some of these points. So the uh, previous picture showed you these um, photochemical-induced rings of, of molecules. So 
We also found molecules that were centrally peaked, and so these are just uh, some examples of those, so particularly in silicon bearing molecules. So this is uh, disilicon carbide, which has been recently detected, so these are central peaks. So these are scales on, on the order of a few arc seconds, so very close to the, to the photosphere. Um, and there are observations both of silicon dicarbide uh, and then isotopes here, oh, sorry, of silicon monoxide and the silicon sulfide. So really, uh, again, on scales of just a one or a few arc seconds. And you also see again here this on, on the silicon dicarbide, it's got an inner peak in intensity, but it's also got one of these, again, these kind of rings that are driven by photochemistry from the interstellar medium further, further out in the amplitude. And so a kind of overall picture of, 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 uh, of what happens in these objects is so you have the central star where in the, in the photosphere densities and temperatures are such that thermodynamic equilibrium applies, we can calculate uh, more or less the, the chemical compositions of the, of the gas here. Um, dust forms driven by uh, pulsations and, and shocks which provides uh, much higher density material allows collisions to occur. Uh, you're at high densities and temperatures, neutral reactions begin the process of, of uh, dust growth and collisions with, with grain seeds then build, build up grains. So on a carbon star they build carbonaceous grains and on an uh, oxygen rich star they build uh, silicates. And this material then, the radiation interacts with the dust, drives the dust out, dust collides with the gas and drives the gas out and you get an outflow uh, which qu quite quickly uh, reaches its terminal velocity and, and simply just flows out into the interstellar medium. 